The company redeveloping the former Oscar Mayer plant is expecting a major financial boost today. One firefighter is dead. Two are in the hospital and more than 100 people are evacuated after a gas explosion here in Sun Prairie. We've got a live report coming up. This is News 3 This Morning. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to News 3 This Morning. It's Wednesday, July 11th. We'll get a check on weather with Chris in a moment. But first, it's been a difficult morning for Sun Prairie firefighters as we have now learned that one of their members died fighting a fire from an explosion around dinner time last night in downtown Sun Prairie. Another firefighter is in stable condition this morning, is getting better. That's the good news. The first calls came to 911 about a gas leak at about 6.20 last night. Then as the area was being evacuated, there was an explosion at the intersection of Maine and Bristol around 7 o'clock. Within the last 20 minutes or so, we learned a Sun Prairie firefighter had died in that incident. More than 100 people remain evacuated this morning. A number of buildings in that area have been leveled. Leah Lynchide's been in Sun Prairie for us all morning long. Joins us now with the latest. Good morning, Leah. Good morning, Adam. Let's recap what we just learned from that press conference within the last half hour here. The most important injuries, seven people, six firefighters and one police officer. Now, of all those people, two firefighters are still in the hospital and will be OK. One firefighter died from his injuries while responding to the gas leak. On damaged buildings, at least three downtown businesses are pretty destroyed. You can see in some of that video how bad the damage was. There is still an evacuation order in place for the half mile area around the site. I tried to get there this morning. I couldn't get any closer than that either. Lots of roads also closed in downtown Sun Prairie, so avoid that area on your morning commute this morning. Now, I said earlier, lots of folks, I imagine, are not sleeping here in Sun Prairie. Certainly the 80 people evacuated from their homes and staying here at the high school in Sun Prairie, and and certainly some of the folks who witnessed what happened, also the folks who were friends with that firefighter who died. Our Christina Laurie joins us now. She talked to one business owner who was inside his business when this happened in downtown Sun Prairie, right? Exactly right, Leah. Patrick DePula was the owner of Salvatore Tomato Pies. He's a chef there as well. He says, like many people in town, he did not sleep much overnight. But that's because, unlike most people in town, he actually witnessed the explosion firsthand. Now, last night, during what he calls one of the busiest dinner rushes he's ever seen, Patrick noticed his uh, the fire, fire department outside his restaurant blocking the street. He also smelled gas inside of his restaurant. He was then told the fire department, uh, he was told by the fire department to evacuate. He likened what was happening to a fire drill. You're not taking it seriously. You think it's inconvenient and you assume you'll be back in the building in 10 minutes. That's when he saw a building explode and a fireball launch up into the sky. And it's one of those moments where you take stock and you're like, OK, well, you know, whatever damage happened to the building, whatever damage damage happened to vehicles or personal property, it's just so unbelievably unimportant when compared to the loss of life that could happen. Patrick says he's glad his crew and customers are safe. He doesn't know how his building is, but honestly, he says he doesn't care. Patrick emphasized that Sun Prairie's fire department is a volunteer fire department. He says there are no braver people on this planet, and he believes that he knows the firefighter who died. We're not naming him at this time. We'll find out more later today. It, I cannot imagine what Patrick is going through, what that firefighter's family is going through. Our thoughts and prayers are with all of those people involved. We're going to keep updating you throughout News 3 this morning, every half hour with updates as we learn them, recapping what we know here in Sun Prairie right now, though. Let's send it back to you, Adam. All right, Leah reporting as well as Christina. Thank you both so much. It is four minutes after the hour right now. Let's turn it over to Chris Reese. It's looking at a pretty nice July forecast. Good morning. That's right. Good morning. Let's go ahead and get you all out the door. A beautiful sunrise going on right now. Temperatures are in the 60s. In fact, we're at 60. Dew points actually have dropped a little bit over the past hour, so that air a little bit drier this morning. We're keeping dew points in the 50s and low 60s for now, but they will stay steady throughout most of the morning before increasing some into the afternoon. As you plan your day, expect that sunshine to continue. We'll see highs right around 86 degrees into the afternoon. Here's a live look at first alert traffic right now. The Beltline moving smoothly. No major delays or issues showing up, though some backups are starting to be noted along the Stoughton Road area. Across Dane County, we don't have any major widespread issues. Of course, we do know Highway 19 yeah. and Sun Prairie. That is going to be closed due to the issue that is ongoing. But if you're traveling from most main highways to the Beltline, it's going to take you about your normal time this morning. All right, good news all around, and at least in that front.
Thank you very much. My pleasure. Appreciate it. It's 6.04 right now. The redevelopment of the former Oscar Meyer plant in Madison set to get some help from the state of Wisconsin. Lieutenant Governor Rebecca Clayfish will join Mayor Soglin later this morning to announce what the Wisconsin Economic Development Corporation is calling a major state grant for that project. A similar grant was recently awarded. You may remember a $500,000 grant to the former GM plant in Janesville. We'll have an update on this story right around 9.30, 10 o'clock or so on channel3000.com. Two Houston men are facing federal charges for stealing textbooks from a series of UW system schools. Ryan Lewis and Genesis Aviar are accused of stealing those books from instructors' offices. They went into those professors' offices at UW-Whitewater, UW-Green Bay, UW-Stout, and UW-River Falls, and then allegedly sent them to a Texas business which then sold those books to students. Prosecutors also believe the two men carried this plan out at colleges in Minnesota, North Dakota, Arizona, New Mexico, and Washington State. We are less than five weeks away now from Wisconsin's August Democratic primary for governor and the Republican primary for Senate. Later today, a local homeless shelter is inviting anybody without a permanent address to register to vote to help them do so. The Beacon Day Resource Center is partnering with the city of Madison and to get people the proper paperwork they need so they can vote this summer and fall. The Dane County Clerk will bring a voting machine to the Beacon on East Washington Avenue as well to show people how it works. This is the old Chamber of Commerce building, that event runs from 9 to 2 today. A couple of the Democratic candidates looking to beat Governor Walker in November are going to be in Rock County tonight. There are eight people running in that August primary. Madison Mayor Soglin, former State Representative Kelda Royce have confirmed they will be at the event hosted by the Rock County Progressives. That candidate forum is at the Community Room on Lodge Drive in Janesville, and it starts tonight at 6 o'clock. From the governor's race to Congress right now, the Democratic candidates looking to replace House Speaker Paul Ryan in Congress are going to be debating in Kenosha County tonight. Iron worker Randy Bryce you see right there, Janesville teacher Kathy Myers right there. You're, they're going to share why they're running at the local union hall across from Kenosha's Bradford High School. That event starts tonight at 630. Now there are four Republican candidates trying to win the nomination on that side of the election ballot on August 14th. Those Republican candidates do not have any scheduled forums where they are all set to be together. In health news this morning, state health officials are watching to see if there are any other cases involving a rare disease that killed a La Crosse County woman. We're talking about Rocky Mountain spotted fever. It is a tick-borne disease spread by a bite from a wood tick. State Health Department says this death is the first one in Wisconsin from that disease. Now, investigators believe the woman was camping in western Wisconsin when she was bit. Rocky Mountain spotted fever is most common in the central and southeastern parts of the United States. A second county in southern Wisconsin is now dealing with concerns about the West Nile virus. Sauk County Health Department says a dead crow tested positive for that virus about a week ago. This is the first bird to test positive for West Nile since Sauk County officials started monitoring for it at the start of May. That virus spreads when mosquitoes bite infected birds and then turn around and bite people. Sauk County health officials want people who live there to be extra careful now when it comes to preventing mosquito bites. A West Nile carrying bird was also discovered, you may remember, in Columbia County at the end of May. It is eight minutes after six right now. The public is invited to share its thoughts over the next couple days about whether UW-Madison should continue to feature two alumni linked to the KKK when they were in school roughly a century ago. We'll share that story here in a couple of minutes. Should be a pretty nice day weather-wise. Beautiful sunrise once again in Platteville, courtesy of the Queen Bee Radio Skycam. Chris is in for Hattie this morning. His first alert forecast is up next on News 3 This Morning.
Good morning to all of you. We are waking up with temperatures in the 60s, dew points on the lower side and clear skies. Here's a live look at Capitol Square right now showing you no cloud cover to be concerned with this morning. 60 degrees, the temperature as you step out, dew points into the mid 50s, so it feels a little bit drier as opposed to yesterday morning. And we're going to keep that dry feel around. Evidence of the cold front, we are 9 degrees colder than 24 hours ago. Dew points 9 degrees lower as well than 24 hours ago, and that's the change we'll see going through the rest of the day before things begin to flip back into the opposite direction. We're seeing dew points in the 50s for most of us, but check out the Mississippi River Valley dew points mainly in the 60s. It's where the air is a bit heavier. A southerly wind will take over into the afternoon and into your Thursday, pushing those higher dew points back on into the picture. That's also where we find temperatures that are a bit warmer right now. We're there in the mid and upper 60s. Elsewhere, it is the low 60s and mid to upper 50s as of now. By 930, we'll find our temperatures pretty much all into the 70s under a mostly sunny sky. 80 degrees by lunchtime. The peak heating of the afternoon will show highs into the mid and upper 80s. 86 to 88 degrees will be the theme for a lot of folks. We're going to keep those clear skies around into the overnight time period with temperatures falling back into the 70s. This dome five pressure responsible for this fantastic weather moving to the south and east. That means the warm, humid air begins to build, especially as we go into Thursday, thanks to a southerly wind flow. But to the north and west, a cold front moving in another air mass out of Canada, gradually working its way to the south and east. That is going to mean chances for showers and thunderstorms will increase, especially as we get you into Friday morning. We do need this rain. We haven't had a lot of rain at all for the month of July other than a little bit on the 4th and some rain lingering from June into the first day of July. Now, the driest July on record only picked up a little under uh, three tenths of an inch. Now, we've just picked up just under four tenths of an inch for the month so far. So in pace for second place, but we do have more than half of the month to go, and we do have ample rain chances coming, especially in the next couple of days. Now, if you're going to be traveling to the beaches, you're concerned about the tropics. Here's Hurricane now, Chris, who's a Category 2 off the coast of the Carolinas. No major needs for concern with that other than the rip current risk, uh, but Hurricane Chris should remain offshore of the United States, potentially making landfall as a hurricane uh, near St. John's before moving out to sea over the northern Atlantic. This morning, 68 to 80 degrees will be mostly sunny and pleasant. 86 degrees into the afternoon. Again, very warm. We're keeping the humidity at bay, but those dew points will begin to come up, especially into Thursday. That's when we'll see a high of 87 degrees lasting into Friday with the shower and thunderstorm chances by Saturday a little bit cooler before warming up on Sunday. That's the warm up ahead of another cold front next week. We should see temperatures that are more comfortable for this time of the year. Now let's go to traffic with Josh Tim. Josh. Yeah, starting off the morning pretty quiet on the bell line with no delays showing up yet in either direction. Checking out Dane County, there are a few brake lights popping up on the northbound side of Rona Road approaching the bell line, and that fire in Sun Prairie will have Highway 19 closed in both directions between North Bristol Street and County Highway N. You definitely will want to avoid that area. No issues downtown around the Capitol and UW campus. Volume not a factor, at least for another half hour or so. And other main routes, including on the interstate, are cruising along at the posted speeds with no crashes or delays. For your first alert traffic, I'm Josh Tim. Thank you very much, Josh. Thank you, Chris. Another first alert traffic note to pass along to people who live on Madison's east side this morning. Starting at 9 o'clock, so in a few hours now, South Ingersoll streets can be closed between East Main and East Wilson streets. That's so the Wilmar Neighborhood Center can start setting up for Fete de Marquette. That closure goes through early Monday morning. And then on Friday morning, South Brearley is going to be closed in that same area for the FET as well. So that French theme festival is also put on by the Willie Street Co-op. Features live music, things to do for the kids, food from all over. Does not cost anything to go, but money from those food sales helps provide free community meals going forward that are hosted then by the Neighborhood Center for people in the community who need it. FET to Marquette starts on Friday afternoon at McPike Park. 616 right now, UW-Madison groups inviting the community to share its ideas about updating spaces in the Memorial Union, named after former UW students with connections to the KKK. The Union Council is considering whether it should remove the name markers above the Frederick March Play Circle and the Porter Butts Gallery. They have been covered up since May. Both Porter Butts and Frederick March had connections to a group with the Klan name back in the early 1900s. Now, the council is meeting this afternoon to talk about its next steps. It's going to hold a public forum tomorrow night at 5 o'clock at the Union. Both meetings are open to anybody who wants to go. 
A final decision from that council is expected by the end of the year. Madison City leaders are talking tonight about giving police officers the authority to ticket people who use their drones illegally. We'll have an update on that story here in a couple of minutes. Plus, there is really no update needed to the weather today. Really nice July day coming. Focus on today because as Chris is going to tell us, the weather is going to change a little bit over the next couple of days. This first alert forecast and update to it is coming up next on News 3 This Morning. Good morning, friends. We've got another beautiful day on tap. The sun rising above the horizon right now. Here's a live look courtesy of the WISC TV camera. Temperature wise, we're sitting at 60 degrees as you step out the door. Dew points are in the mid 50s, so it is fairly comfortable as, the as we go through the next 12 hours. We'll see our highs right around 86 degrees. That should come right around 4 o'clock. Dew points will be staying low, but those temperatures will be coupled with the sky full of sunshine today. So that is the the good news, no rain chances to be concerned with. Now, our little kitty roller coaster ride kind of continues for the next couple of days with temperatures going up and down, along with dew points going up and down. But as we get towards the end of the next 10 day stretch into next week at this time, we should see temperatures that are much more closer, if not a little bit below average for this time of the year. Adam. All right, thank you so much, Chris. The city of Janesville is reversing a parking role it had downtown after residents and business owners complained to the city in an online survey. City manager decided to end an experiment making angled parking stalls in a one-block stretch on West Milwaukee Street 
back in only. The Janesville Gazette reports that change was meant to improve safety so drivers had better sight lines when they were actually leaving those parking spaces. You see this back in only thing in bigger cities like Austin and St. Louis. They use it for safety reasons, but after negative feedback and concern from Janesville business owners about losing customers, the city is now going back to allowing people to park however they want in those spaces. Madison police could soon be able to ticket people who fly their drones illegally. City's Public Safety Review Committee will talk tonight about a proposal that would allow for fines as high as $750 if people use those drones illegally. Right now, Madison officers are prohibited by city ordinance from enforcing federal laws regarding drones. For example, private citizens are not allowed to weaponize drones or use them to invade privacy under federal re regulations. The city's plan would bring Madison's policies on drone right now in line with state law. That public safety committee is also going to take up Mayor Soglin's city wheel tax proposal tonight. The new fee would add $17 to the cost of registering your car here in the city of Madison. That's on top of the new $28 registration fee the county is putting into effect this fall and the already existing $75 fee that the state has had in place for a while. If the city fee is passed, you'd end up paying around $120 every year to register most vehicles. Trucks that weigh more than 6,000 pounds, hybrids, electric vehicles would cost more to register. The Common Council is facing a deadline of October 2nd to pass that fee. That's the deadline for notifying the state of any changes to allow those changes to take effect by the start of next year. 623 right now coming up we're going to go back out to Sun Prairie get the latest on the gas explosion there from Leah Lynchide one firefighter is dead in that situation and Rock County Sheriff's deputies are warning people about a scam going around where someone pretends to be one of them day's top stories are next on News 3 this morning
A company redeveloping the former Oscar Mayer plant could get a significant boost today from state economic officials. Firefighters are cleaning up a gas explosion without one of their colleagues this morning. We've got a live report on injuries and one death coming up. This is News 3 This Morning. Good morning and welcome to News 3 This Morning. It's our final half hour, 627 right now on this Wednesday, July 11th. Chris Reese will have your first alert forecast coming up, but we start this half hour with the latest on the situation, the explosion in downtown Sun Prairie. It's a difficult morning for that community's firefighters. As we have learned within the last hour, one of those members died fighting the fire from that explosion around dinner time last night. Another firefighter remains in stable condition this morning in the hospital. First calls came to 911 about a gas leak about 620 last night. Then as the area was being evacuated, there was an explosion at the intersection of Maine and Bristol around 7 o'clock. Support groups are being set up to help the fire department deal with its loss. The flames and smoke so bad they showed up as rain on the News 3 weather radar. More than 100 people this morning remain evacuated and a number of buildings have been destroyed. Leah Linshide's live in Sun Prairie now with more on this tragic story. Good morning, Leah. Good morning, Adam. Here is the latest information from police this morning. Let's start with the news that might be the hardest to hear. One firefighter is dead. He was responding to that gas leak around 6.30 last night. He died from his injuries in the resulting explosion. Five other firefighters were hurt, along with one police officer and seven bystanders. Only two firefighters are still in the hospital. As Adam said, they're doing well. Everyone else has been treated and released. As for damage, at least three downtown businesses are destroyed. We Energies confirms the gas is shut off in that area, but there is still an evacuation order for basically all of downtown. Lots of streets closed in some prairie this morning, so avoid that area on your morning commute. Now that means the 80 or so people who are staying here at the high school, the gym here in Sun Prairie, they will not be going home quite yet. Others who are lucky enough to go home, they might be struggling this morning with what they heard, what they saw. Some of them are struggling because they knew that firefighter. He was a friend, a father, a family member. Now, Christina Laurie joins us with more on that. Good morning, Christina. Good morning, Leah. One of those people is Patrick DePula. He's the owner of Salvador Tomato Pies here in town. And like many people in Sun Prairie, he says he did not sleep much overnight because he was shaken to the core by witnessing that explosion that killed a firefighter who was his friend firsthand. Sun Prairie's fire department is a volunteer department and a tight knit group at that. Patrick described his friend, the firefighter who was killed, as above all else a family man and was brought to tears when talking about that with us earlier this morning. None of this makes sense tonight, honestly. None of this makes sense at all. It's 3 o'clock in the morning, and, and it's just, I just keep thinking about that family and, and how this, uh, this, this brave firefighter lost his life doing his duty in, uh, in a devastating, tragic incident in Sun Prairie. Patrick says that from his understanding, the, the explosion could have happened in any of the buildings. Now, Patrick is fortunate that all his crew and customers were able to get out of the building safely. He says he doesn't know what damage the explosion caused to his restaurant, but frankly, he says that is so insignificant on mornings like this. And we know Patrick is dealing with a lot. He had to leave his car in downtown Sun Prairie because police wouldn't let him anywhere near that area. Uh, we are also following what's going on here at the high school. We know that the evacuation order has not been lifted in Sun Prairie High School, but you're gonna see behind me lots of elderly folks getting onto an ambulance. That's because of the 80 people staying here, most of them came from a nursing home that had to be evacuated. So lots of folks needing uh, extra supplies, medication, special needs here at the high school. We're hoping for an update on when that evacuation order will be lifted, if these folks get to go home anytime soon that we are hoping to hear from that. Now, we do not expect a press release from police until later today. So in the meantime, stay right here on News 3 this morning. We're going to update you in the morning sprint. We're also going to keep you updated on Channel 3000 and throughout our newscasts all day. Adam, back to you. All right. Leila Inshai, Christina Laurie, thank you both so much for your reporting this morning in Sun Prairie. It is 631 right now. We wanted to send it outside to Chris Reese, who has a pretty nice July first alert forecast. Good morning, Chris. Good morning, Adam. It is a really nice July day. Lots of sunshine out here, and that is the good news that we'll have for this Wednesday morning. The temperature is in the 60s right now. In fact, it is 60 degrees here in Madison. Dew points are very comfortable into the mid 50s. It's warmer as you work your way over towards the Mississippi. River Valley. That's where temperatures get a little bit warmer, but that's due to a southwesterly wind that will be moving back into town as we go through the day, but it's going to still 
take a minute for the worst of the humidity to get into town. 86 degrees will be our high this afternoon. Dew points will stay where they are for the most part, but then gradually begin to increase, especially later on in the evening headed into tomorrow. Here's a look at your first alert traffic so far. The Beltline does continue to run smoothly. No brake lights showing up on the Beltline or downtown this morning, so that is good news. Most main routes cruising along at their normal speeds with no crashes or delays. Adam. All right, thank you so much, Chris. It is 632 right now. The redevelopment of the former Oscar Meyer plant in Madison set to get some help from the state today. Lieutenant Governor Rebecca Clayfish is going to join Mayor Soglin later this morning to announce what the Wisconsin Economic Development Corporation is calling a major state grant for the project. This is going to be happening right around 9 o'clock, 930 this morning. We're going to have an update on channel 3000.com. You may remember a similar grant was recently awarded half million dollars worth to the former GM plant to help clean up that factory area in Janesville. To national news now, President Trump's in Brussels today for two days of meetings with NATO leaders. He's battled with European countries about paying more for their own security. And already this morning, there are reports of sharp conversations with the general who's in charge of NATO. The president said he expected this summit to be difficult. While there, he's already accused Germany this morning of being a captive to Russia because of an energy pipeline between those two countries. Before the meeting started, head of the European Union cautioned both sides of what was at stake, wrote an open letter that said, Dear America, appreciate your allies. After all, you don't have many. And dear Europe, spend more money on your defense. The Justice Department is trying to figure out how to catch up with a deadline that it missed last night for reuniting immigrant children with their parents. Around half of the detainees under the age of five were reunited with their families on Tuesday. Federal judge in California refused the federal government's request for more time. It instead urged officials to move faster. The Wisconsin State Patrol is trying to figure out how a man died on the side of the interstate in Columbia County. A trooper saw a parked van on the interstate near Highway 60 early yesterday morning. This happened right around 6 o'clock in the morning. When that trooper stopped and looked inside, he saw a man who was dead, nobody else in that van. The victim's name is being withheld until his family is notified. The Rock County Sheriff's Department is warning people about a phone scam where callers are impersonating one of its sergeants. That caller is telling victims they missed a court summons and there's now a warrant out for their arrest. Rock County Sheriff's Department says police, their deputies never make a call like this. It's not clear who has been making those calls, although they, they have been identifying themselves as Sergeant Troy Egger of the Rock County Sheriff's Department. Sergeant Egger is not making those calls. Deputies say if you get a call like this, you should simply hang up. There is an opportunity for people looking for child care and affordable housing on Madison's east side to hear about plans tonight for a new development at Union Corners. Red Caboose Child Care Center is partnering with a nonprofit housing developer, which is creating a mixed use space right off of East Wash on Winnebago Street. That space would provide the Red Caboose more classrooms than it has at its current building on Willie Street. The overall development would also include 48 low cost apartments. Madison leaders have been trying for a while now to get more daycare options in some of the city's lower income neighborhoods. There is a community meeting at the Goodman Community Center tonight on this topic. If it is eventually approved, construction on this development could start in the fall of next year. We are continuing to watch what could happen to a longtime east side business that closed in April. The State Journal reports three business owners in the Willie Street neighborhood are now hoping to buy Star Liquor and get it back up and running by September. That store has been part of the Willie Street neighborhood for decades. One of the former owners of Star Liquor is one of the three who are working to save it. He's talking with the store's most recent owner about the possibility of taking it over. 635 right now, News 3 is teaming up with a local nonprofit to help new parents get everything they need to raise a child. We'll share how you can help out during our community baby shower when News 3 This Morning comes right back.
Welcome back to the program. 6.38 right now, the time of the morning. We always ask you to share a little bit about what's going on in your world, your morning with us. And the picture I selected was from Jennifer Harris today. It was, uh, she posted it on Facebook. It was of a tight shot of a flower. I know we had a, a, a tight shot of an animal yesterday. I was on this flower kick for a while. Today it's going to be a flower if we're able to see it. But if not, no worries. You can take a picture, post it on our Facebook page or on Twitter. With that hashtag, MyNews3Morning, we show off our favorites, Danica Lee and I every morning right here on News 3 this morning. All right, to business news right now, a famous Chicago hot dog chain is starting construction on Madison's east side today. The new Portillo's is going to be on East Town Boulevard right by the mall. The restaurant's going to have seating for more than 200 people, an outdoor patio, a double lane drive through It'll feature a diner theme interior with decor from the 50s and 60s. The Madison Portillo is going to be the company's third location. The other two are in the Milwaukee area. Almost 20 minutes to 7 right now. It's going to be another warm July day outside, and it's looking like humidity is coming back to make it even hotter tomorrow. Chris Reese is also watching the chance of some rain over the next couple of days as well. His first alert forecast is coming up next. First, though, it's July 11th. We want to say happy birthday to Paige and Haley and all the other little kids turning three today. Thanks so much for letting us help you celebrate right here on News 3 This Morning. Taking a live look this morning from the WISC TV sky cam on the west side of Madison. The sun is up. It is going to be around pretty much all day today. We're in for another pretty nice July day. Chris Reese will be here in a moment or so with your full first alert forecast. 
643 right now. News 3 is partnering with a local nonprofit called Today Not Tomorrow to help ease the burden for parents in Dane County with what we're calling a community baby shower. We are looking for diapers, baby wipes, formula, gently used clothing, strollers, cribs, anything you might need in order to help out new parents. You can drop off items for the community baby shower today through Friday at any Viridian home locations, including the one off the Beltline at Southtown Drive or at any associated physicians locations, including the one on Regent Street at South Midvale Boulevard. You can also make a donation just paying cash to the cause. Just do so through PayPal. All of that information is on our website channel3000.com. All right, let's turn it now over to Chris Reese. And Chris, we're, we're talking about the potential for the second driest July in history. That's right. We have not had much rain at all this month. Now, we do have a lot more of the month to go, but get this. Since the month started, we had a little under four tenths of an inch of rain. That was on day one with the rainstorm that came through really the day before and lingered into the morning of July 4th or July 1st. Rather, we did have a trace of rain on July 4th, but since then, the month has been dry. Here we are on the 11th, though. We do still have most of the month to go. We do have some rain chances in the forecast. But yes, if we were to get no more rain, it would wind up being the second driest July. The first driest July saw just under three tenths of an inch of rain. We're not tracking any rain on Doppler track for us here in Wisconsin at all this morning. There have been several days with rain chances up across portions of Minnesota, but they have not made it down south because we've had a lot of dry air in place. In fact, we have an easterly wind right now, and that is a dry wind that comes off of Lake Michigan. On the bright side, it looks great and it feels great outside. 60 degrees right now, dew points into the low and mid 50s, helping it to feel awesome out there. Check out the warmth back to the west where it is 70 in Minneapolis right now. This warm air eventually will be working its way into our part of town as we get in on a southwesterly wind flow. It's going to take a while to do so, but you're already starting to see evidence of that as you get over towards the Mississippi River Valley. That's where dew points are a little bit higher into the 60s, whereas we still have our dew points here in the 50s. That's where the drier air is and dew points are actually lower than they were this time yesterday. So yesterday morning was a little muggy this morning. Not so much. We're going to keep that sunshine around as we go through the rest of the day. Temperatures will top out right around 86 degrees. This dome of high pressure responsible for all this nice weather moving to the south and east. Eventually this southerly wind takes over. That means we're going to get warmer and we're going to get more humid, but pay attention to the cold front moving in from the north and west. That's going to be sparking off chances for showers and thunderstorms, especially Thursday night and into the day on Friday. But we're going to keep this little kitty roller coaster ride going on in the temperature and humidity department, especially as we go through this week, spiking up Thursday and Friday down by Saturday up again on Sunday. Now, as we get you into next week, our temperatures begin to feel a little bit more like they should for this time of the year. We'll get rid of some of that heat and humidity, but 87 degrees for Thursday and Friday. Shower chances really beginning to increase on Friday. Saturday, we are cooler, yes, with additional rain chances, and then a warm front brings more rain chances into your day on Sunday. But another Canadian high looks to take over next week. That is what will keep temperatures into the upper 70s and lower 80s for those highs. Lots of sunshine and low humidity can be expected on those days as well. Mm -hmm. and your pet walk here is Max and Madison looking at some good burgers there that I'm sure he wants <laughs> and uh, it looks like his baby brother there might tell on him yeah you know for what he's about to get into yeah so, yeah not a bad day to uh, walk Max no not at all if you're gonna be walking Max this afternoon 84 degrees humidity like I said it'll be a little bit lower today nice to hear thank yeah. you so much Chris. my pleasure morning sprints up next first though here is John Dickerson with a preview of CBS this morning Good morning ahead on CBS This Morning. We'll talk with a U.S. mission commander who worked to help free the Trap Thai youth soccer team, how they did it, and how the boys are recovering. And archaeologists unearth bones and mysteries in a new section of the ancient Roman city of Pompeii. Seth Doan traveled there to see what tourists have yet to experience. See you at 7.
651 time now for the morning sprint. Chris Reese says it's pretty normal July day with warm temperatures and humidity. But we start with Leah Lynchide, who's in Sun Prairie with the latest on an explosion that has killed one firefighter led to the evacuation of more than 100 people in that city. Good morning, Leah. Good morning. Senior citizens staying here at the high school with the Red Cross are waiting to go home to their assisted living center as the evacuation area in downtown Sun Prairie gets smaller. Still, a firefighter is dead. Two more are in the hospital, and most of the city's downtown still shut down after last night's gas explosion. It happened around 7 at the corner of Bristol and Main Streets. More than 100 people had to leave their homes at the time, but only about 20 are still here at the high school with the Red Cross as these folks head home. Crews will be at the site all day, working to make sure it's safe before the area is opened back up. I'm Christina Laurie, also live in Sun Prairie this morning, where we talked to a business owner who says he was shaken to his core and hasn't gotten much sleep like many people in town after witnessing that deadly explosion yesterday. This is the scene Patrick DiPulo had to look at last night. He's the owner and chef at Salvador Tomato Pies and calls the firefighter who was killed a friend and above all else, a family man. Patrick emphasized that Sun Prairie's fire department is a volunteer department and a tight knit group at that. He says there are no braver people on the planet. We will learn more about the firefighter killed at a press conference later today. Thank you, Christina. Thank you, Leah. The redevelopment of the former Oscar Mayer plant in Madison set to get some help from the state this morning. Lieutenant Governor Rebecca Clayfish will join Mayor Soglin later this morning to talk about the Wisconsin Economic Development Corporation. It's calling in a major state grant for that redevelopment project. A similar half million dollar grant was recently awarded to the company that's cleaning up the former GM plant in Janesville. A local homeless day shelter is inviting anybody without a permanent address to register to vote today. The Beacon Day Resource Center is partnering with City of Madison election officials to get people the proper paperwork they need so they can vote this summer and fall. That event is happening from 9 to 2 today at the Beacon on East Washington Avenue. The Democratic candidates looking to replace House Speaker Paul Ryan in Congress will be debating in Kenosha County tonight. Iron worker Randy Bryce, Janesville teacher Kathy Myers will share why they're running at the local Union Hall across from Kenosha's Bradford High School. That event starts tonight at 630. There are four Republican candidates trying for the nomination in that party as well on August 14th. President Trump is in Brussels today for two days of meetings with NATO leaders. He's battled with European countries about paying more for their own security. And already this morning, he's criticized Germany for being, in his words, captive to Russia because of an oil pipeline between the two countries. Only five of the 29 NATO members have paid their dues so far this year to that security organization. Back in Rock County, the Sheriff's Department's warning people about a phone scam where callers are impersonating one of its sergeants. Callers telling victims they missed a court summons and now that there's a warrant out for their arrest unless they pay them some money. Rock County Sheriff's Department says police would never make a call like this. Deputies say if you get a call like this, simply hang up. And we continue to track yet another beautiful day out there. We'll see skies full of sunshine into the afternoon. Temperatures topping out into the mid and upper 80s. Dew points in the 50s. They're going to stay steady before spiking just a little bit into the low 60s this afternoon and evening. Sunshine for last the entire day. 86 degrees your high. Clear skies lasting overnight with lows in the 60s for tomorrow morning. Thank you very much, Chris. The second county in southern Wisconsin is now dealing with concerns about the West Nile virus. Sauk County Health Department says a dead crow tested positive for the virus about a week ago. It's the first bird to test positive for West Nile since Sauk County officials started monitoring for that disease at the start of May. That virus spreads when mosquitoes bite infected birds and then bite people. A UW-Madison group's inviting the community to share its ideas about updating spaces in the Memorial Union, which are right now named after former UW students with connections to the KKK from back in the early 1900s. The Union Council's considering whether it should remove the name markers above the Porter Butts Gallery and the Frederick March Play Circle. Both have been covered up since May. The Council's meeting this afternoon. Talk about its next steps. It's going to hold a public forum tomorrow night at 5 in the Union. It is expected to make a decision by the end of the year. Madison police could soon be able to ticket people who fly their drones illegally. The city's Public Safety Review Committee will talk tonight about a plan to allow for fines as high as $750 if people would use those drones illegally. Right now, Madison police are prohibited by city ordinance from enforcing federal laws regarding drones. The city's plan would bring the city's policies in line with state law. That committee will also take up Mayor Soglin's city wheel tax proposal tonight. 
That new fee would add $17 to the cost of registering your car in the city of Madison. This would come on top of a new $28 registration fee for Dane County that's going into effect this fall and the already existing $75 fee that the state's had in place for a while. If passed, you'd pay a total of $120 every year to register most vehicles. City's facing a deadline of October 2nd to pass that fee. That's the last day they'd be able to notify the state of any changes and have them take effect by the start of next year. There is an opportunity for people looking for child care and affordable housing on the east side. Hear about plans tonight for a new development at Union Corners. The Red Caboose Child Care Center is partnering with a nonprofit housing developer to create a mixed use space right off of East Wash on Winnebago Street. That space would provide the Red Caboose more classrooms, would also include 48 low cost apartments. There is a meeting at the Goodman Community Center on this project tonight. 646 right now, let's get a final check on your first alert traffic with Josh Tim. Good morning, Josh. Good morning. Still moving well on the Beltline. No major issues popping up yet, although that westbound side is starting to get crowded between Stoughton Road and West Broadway. Inbound John Nolan having the brakes near the Rimrock and Dolan Avenue intersections leading into the downtown area. Several roads in Sun Prairie remain closed around where that gas leak explosion took place, including Highway 19 between North Bristol Street and Highway N. But other main routes leading into Madison, they're moving along at the posted speeds with no crashes or delays. Your first alert traffic, I'm Josh Tim. Thank you very much, Josh. We continue to see temperatures warming up this morning, 65 degrees right now. As we go through the rest of the day, we'll see temperatures warm up to 86 degrees, cooling down into the upper 60s for tomorrow morning. And then we begin to toast things up. Upper 80s and low 90s will be the highs into the day tomorrow. All right. Thank you, Chris. We'll have updates on the situation in Sun Prairie. One firefighter has died. We'll have the latest throughout the day on News 3. Making plans that are weather dependent? Get an accurate 12 hour, even a 10 day forecast. Download the Channel 3000 First Alert Weather app and start planning.